Native Wayne Jobson. Sure. <laughs> greetings, greetings, the maximum respect. I want to welcome everybody today. We want to call up some special guests. BJ Souls, the actress from the film. Justine Hetzel.
reason why I'm sitting here on this stage tonight. And Arthur Gorson's pictures were an inspiration. Uh, the first time a lot of us of a certain age here in America even heard the word reggae was in an extraordinary article in Rolling Stone magazine that uh, came out in June of 1973. It was called The Wild Side of Paradise. And the, uh, the front page of this very long article had all the different images of Jimmy with the guns in his hand. And uh, Michael Thomas, the gonzo journalist from Australia who wrote the piece said, reggae music crawls into your bloodstream like some vampire amoeba from the psychic rapids of upper Niger consciousness. <laughs> and I said, I don't know what the hell that means, but i got to find it right now. And I was living in Berkeley, and I went down to Shattuck Avenue and found a used copy of Bob Marley's first American album, Catch a Fire, and paid two bucks for it, figured I could take a chance. And the next night, in a little north side Berkeley movie theater that held about 40 people, I went to see The Harder They Come in a full house, and when the chalice scene came on, the entire theater lit up. You could barely see the screen. We were in sympathy with the smoking that was going on on the screen. And I bought the soundtrack on the way home, and my life changed from that two-day period forever. Uh, some of the older folks here may remember a show called The Reggae Beat on KCRW that Hank Holmes and I started back in 1979. And Bob Marley was our first guest. Jimmy Cliff followed soon after. Will you hold the mic for me, please? Um, many things came out of, of these adventures. The latest, a little closer, um, is, is a book that I did with Peter Simon, who did the first major book on reggae in America with Stephen Davis called Reggae Bloodlines. And uh, we collaborated a couple of years ago on a thing called the Reggae Scrapbook, which looked back at our combined almost 80 years of, of reggae fandom, and it's a book that's full of things that you can take out and play with and stickers and stuff, but I brought it tonight because of this. It is a tribute to the internationalization of The Harder They Come, which Justine's dad forewalled in 42 different countries. There is a French poster here where it was called Toot Toot Sweet, and we put in a removable poster for the latest incarnation of this great creation, The Harder They Come, which was a stage play in London that got unbelievable rave reviews from the Times of London and other very straight publications there. This was the, the poster for the stage show, and I think it was done in Florida recently too, wasn't Toronto it? Toronto and Miami. Toronto and Miami, and, and we do very much hope that it will be done here on the live stage in Los Angeles. But of particular interest to all of us here tonight is the forewalling in December of 1972 at the New Art Theater. And the poster for that is in here. So for all the millions of people around the world who were first exposed to job music by the work of this extraordinary filmmaker, we say thank you to, to the Hansel family. And I'm, I'm proud to be here to, to thank you in person. One of the reasons why Perry is a genius is that it's easy if you're Martin Scorsese and you're making a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. All you have to say is action. But basically everybody in the movie you're going to see right now, the harder they come, none of them were actors. Jimmy Cliff had never been in a film before, never even been on a stage. None of these people had been on stages or in films. So basically, Perry said he was going to make a Jamaican film. Everybody goes, you're crazy. Nobody's ever been in a Jamaican film. It's never going to happen. It's never going to be a success. What's reggae music? Nobody has ever heard of reggae music. This is early 70s. So basically, Perry just went out on a limb and did it. And to make that such a genius film with all non-actors was, was one of the most amazing accomplishments I've ever seen. So I want to turn you on now to Justine Hensel, Perry's daughter. <laughs> 